Hey everyone, Dave Hagen here. Today we're going to do another edition of the Credit Card Roundtable. Today our topic is going to be interest rates. That's today on the Financial Wellness Podcast. Welcome to the Financial Wellness Podcast, Dave's weekly message to keep you on your path to the financial success. Here is your host, financial problem solver and talk show host, Dave Hagan. Hey, thanks, Nick. Hey, today we're talking about interest rates and in general and interest rates in credit cards in particular. I've got, uh, as always, Nick's here with us today and, and Brian Reed's back for another uh, episode. So uh, we'll have some interesting conversation. Uh, let's set the table a little bit. Credit cards. Last time we talked about how they were handy or they have benefits or maybe there's some status to them. But the one thing that they all have in common is interest rate. Interest rate. So let's talk about that a little bit. First of all, guys, let's let's check out what we got in our in our uh, in our wallets. Pull out your wallets, pull out your credit cards. All right, all right. All right. I don't even have mine in here. Um, all right. So I got I got three. Um, I don't know how I came to carry three. I got, uh, well, I got three visas. Didn't even know that. Uh, one business, one personal. And Brian, you're going to say? I've got a debit, yeah, one okay, business, good. Good. and one personal credit. Okay. I'm usually carrying those three. Okay. And I have a debit, I have a visa, and then I have a Costco visa. Nice. All right. Now let me ask you this. Do you have any idea what the interest rate is on the cards? I know exactly how no, much. No, you, you I know, know. exactly. <laughs> you, you millennial guys. All right, what, so what's your interest rate? So on my Costco visa, yeah. I have a 12% APR. And then on my regular visa, I have an 18%. Nice. Nicely done. Any idea, Brian? I haven't checked in a while. I, maybe it moved. <laughs> I, have, yeah, I, have, I, have, I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, the interest rate, I know I shopped it at one point, but... That I have no idea. I haven't, you know what? To be, yeah, I haven't checked. I, I remember being fine with the interest rate going, okay, that was good. But have I looked recently? I gotta yeah. be honest, I haven't. Yeah. I gotta and, go do that. And you know, down. the agreement that we have with our credit card says that they can increase or decrease, but increase the interest rate by giving us notice. They can amend the, the, the credit card agreement by giving us notice. Also by one late payment. If you pay late once, that you are subjected to a higher uh, APR. It's even worse than that. There's a concept called universal default. And if you're late with another credit account and they pick that up on your credit report, they can use that as a basis to increase your, your interest rate. So, I mean, it's, it's kooky. It's kooky. I don't know. We didn't talk about that before the show, but I thought it'd be really interesting to see what what we're all carrying around. Um, let's talk about usury just a little bit because these interest rates are pretty high. Most states have usury laws, and that says that in transactions between entities or people, you can't charge over a, a certain interest rate. And in California, the rate floats based upon you know X percent plus the San Francisco prime rate. Um, and that rate's pretty low right now. Um, I wouldn't even want to venture a guess, but it's real low. It's in single digits. So then the question becomes, how are these credit card companies charging? 12, 14, 18, 21, 29 in some cases, or at least an average of 17.5%. Well, they can do that because they get exemptions from the state's usury laws as commercial lenders. So they get a license to rip you off from the state. So is that basically the definition of not a loan shark yeah. versus a loan shark? I, I, that, that's crazy. I mean, it used to be loan shark. Now it's you know MasterCard and Visa. <laughs> I mean, there were reasons for usury laws. I mean, they were even borrowing some some content, uh, some concepts from um, you know the, the Old Testament. And it's just not a good idea for people that have money to be able to um, loan it out and, and get high rates of interest. It's it's too difficult for the people that are borrowing it. So I don't know. Is it a good idea to have exemptions from uh, the usury laws for commercial lenders or for credit card companies? Uh, I don't know. It's something we could talk about for, for quite a period of time, I guess. But that's the biggest downside of all these, these credit cards. It just takes forever 
um, to pay them off if somebody gets behind on this. It's, it's, it, you're right, Nick. It's kind of like loan sharking, seems to me. Legal loan sharking. Yeah, yeah. So how about this? This was an idea that was bantered about. What if the credit card companies were required to put a warning label on their credit card or an acknowledgement label that the interest rate was usurious and that the, the company's exempt. What would that look like? I mean, we put, we put warning labels on alcohol. We put labels on cigarettes. I was just going to say the cigarette example where it's literally on the carton. Yeah. I mean, who, who, who buys cigarettes these days anymore with that? The, the, the warning scares the hell out of you. Yeah, I are mean, you talking about having a warning on like the TV, tangible card on the tangible card itself, or on the advertisements on TV? Something that runs like uh, you know when you see a drug commercial and there's a new drug for I don't, whatever ailment is out there, and it always has the fine print at the bottom, right. or there's a spokesperson that's talking about you know. Uh, side effects include right amnesty and nevia. If <laughs> symptoms last more than four hours, no, we're not going there. <laughs> um, yeah, they put all those those warnings on there. I don't know. That would be interesting too, Brian, wouldn't it? On that the, on the advertising, the same way that you know a lot of uh, alcohol commercials always say "drink responsibly," and they're probably because they're forced to. Oh, I, I know mean, they're forced they're to. They're forced sure. to. Sure, sure. So, what's so wrong with spend responsibly? Now, I can see why, look, we don't want to keep reminding people to not buy things. Maybe it should be, you know, buy, you know I guess ultimately, doesn't the government want, to, want us to buy everything we want, but to be doing it with cash? So our debt is not increasing, but the things that we are purchasing, the amount of purchases remains the same. But people can't pay in cash. Most people are using credit cards and you know, accumulating credit card debt. We need purchases to keep the economy going. So is the government going to enforce? Spend responsibly? Does our government spend responsibly? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a whole nother kettle of fish going on there. But I, you know, I think you're right. Does the, does the government really have an interest in wanting us to spend responsibly? Yes, they want healthy people in the population. On the other hand, the economy which is, seems to be the number one political issue in the last bunch of years, um, depends upon people continuing to Bye. spend. And it doesn't, you know, the, 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 the economic numbers that they look at don't say, well, this much is credit and this much is cash. They just know what people are spending. And if people continue to spend, the economy looks pretty robust and rosy and things are pretty good and people can get elected and reelected and all that kind of stuff. So I, I kind of wonder, I kind of wonder, do we have the... Do we have the political uh, fortitude to even contemplate something like that? Or can we even do anything over the, the financial industry's lobbyists? They're pretty powerful folks. You know, 10 years ago, they passed uh, some pretty radical changes to the, to the bankruptcy law and made it a lot more cumbersome and difficult for uh, people to get relief uh, in the bankruptcy courts. Took them a while to do it. They spent like, I don't know, a third of a billion dollars or something. Uh, but they, they ultimately got a Congress and a president that would sign off on that. And uh, I don't know that made a whole lot of difference. It's just a lot of extra work for people. Is there a free speech issue? Oh, huge, don't you think? Yeah. I mean, working in the law office for all those years, that issue just kind of jumps out at you, doesn't it, Brian? Yeah. All right. Can we force someone? I mean, obviously with you know the drug companies or alcohol... Does that seem socially responsible to, to have a warning like that? And if you're a congressman, to, to support something like that. But this is, we're kind of saying, people, you cannot be trusted. Therefore, we have to give you a warning. You have to be reminded to spend responsibly because, you know, what are we, kids? Yeah. Well, Credit card companies are just going to argue. No one's holding a, a gun to their head. No one's forcing them to use our card. We have a we have a product. Our product is our lending services. Right. You choose whether you want to use our services or not. Right. You know. Well, and it seems to me that uh, some of that would depend upon your personal view of 
human nature and the role of government, you know, and some people think that government should protect us from a lot of things. And some people think that people should protect themselves from their own things. Don't tread on me. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, uh, on, on one hand, um, you know, they, uh, the industry should be able to do what it wants. We should argue freedom of speech. Yeah, we should. We'll pick a side. (laughs) Pick one side, not the other side. This is going to go back to law school and debate, and it's going to be: you take one side, I'll take the other side, and then we'll we'll hash it out and see what we come up with. I can just see our listeners driving down the freeway, listening to the podcast, going, "Holy cow, they're really getting into it!" I'm I'm going to keep listening all the way to the end to when they start talking about each other's mamas and stuff. You know. Oh man! We're gonna have to video cast that one. Yeah, yeah, that would be fun. That would be fun. Fight. <laughs> but could you imagine? Um, I mean, maybe your maybe your idea is better to, you know, to put it on the advertising itself because that's where, what we've been talking about. Same thing in uh, in magazines. It's always there. Yeah, yeah. So if there was some kind of warning there, it'd be kind of weird to be on the credit card. But I suppose if everybody had it on the credit card, I think so. If every credit card has to have something. Uh, uh, just an S and an R, just the initials, S and R, spend responsibly. Then it could be the same color as the card. It doesn't need to be, you know, highlighted, but just every card would have to have a logo, just SR, or maybe it's a logo. Maybe it's something. I'm not saying it has to be huge. It has to be, um, you know, uh, in neon or something like that. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a concept. About. Would, it, would it have any, any yeah. effect? Or maybe maybe that goes on a, a monthly statement. You know, I know one thing that uh, they've been trying to get credit cards to do for years was to put some kind of a st- something on the statement that says, you know, hey, at the minimum monthly, it's going to take you this many years to pay off your balance. Yeah, um, I mean and that, 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 that happened. That took a long time, I think, to yeah. get that forced yeah, yeah. through. But the credit card companies had to eventually give in and do it. Right. Or, or, or what about instead of an SR, you have to put the percentage that they have to pay each month on the card. On the card. I mean, would would it, would that happen? Probably not. But would it help people? Probably. Yeah. As a reminder. Yeah. 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 You know, I've I've seen a lot of credit card statements over the years, and. Um, you know, other, other people's in the, in the, you know, the law practice and, and, and my own, um, I, I wish that they would put the interest rate in a little bolder, um, font in a little larger font. I have a hard time finding, um, what that interest rate is. It's not readily accessible. And you're also blind. (laughs) <laughs> well that too that your glasses dude you're lost that, that that too that too but you know that would be i mean that's a really important fact i think and it makes it makes you a better if you know it's a great um, point. what those interest rates are and and we saw from our little exercise earlier that that you know everyone doesn't have a very good idea what their interest rates are unless you're nick the announcer here thank you yeah yeah so um you know, that, you could, would, that would be you interesting. You could put it right underneath the balance in the due date. Right. Yeah. Reminder, every purchase you make may cost you 18% yeah. in interest. Yeah. Yeah. Not a good position to be in to, to borrow that, that much money and, and have to pay that kind of an interest rate. Not a good position to be in. So what's the credit card company's response going to be to ideas like this? What do you guys think? No one is telling credit card users to not pay their balance off. Right. They're saying credit card companies, I think, are going to argue, we're giving you a card and you can make these purchases and then you earn the points, congratulations, and then feel free to pay us back at the end of every month and guess what? No interest. Yep. There's no carryover. Yeah, and piggy- piggybacking off Brian, they're saying, here, use our money at your leisure. We're, we're not forcing you to do anything. Right, right. So freedom of choice, self-determination. Personal responsibility. No, I hear you. I hear you. Well, and then at the same time, they're gonna, you know, they argue that, and then they just lay all the traps, or the traps are waiting for you yep. if you do not make those payments on time. Yeah. Here yep. comes the interest. Here comes the potential increased interest. The late fee. There's the late fee. They're going to bump it up from 18 to 21 if you're... Three, sec- three seconds late on your payment or your, your phone dies so you can't make your online payment. Right. Don't care. Right. Our, we were open. Right. And like so many arguments, I don't think that there's completely a right or a wrong. There's, there's various shades of gray 
on on both sides of this issue, um, and and to pat ourselves on the back a little bit, if, if I might, um, I think that getting people to think about it, getting people a little bit of, dare I say, education, maybe just a little bit of knowledge, and getting people to be a little more thoughtful about it is a good way to straddle the extremes of both of those arguments that uh, that we were talking about. It still preserves the, the free speech and the self-determination, and yet is providing some protection. And that's one of the reasons that we get together and do these kinds of things is we want to get that information out and cause people to think so that when they see think, it, think, 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 when they, when they see the, you know, a, 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 an advertisement at, at halftime of the Super Bowl and it says, Oh, it's smart money. They, they want to puke because they just realize how false that, that truly is. Or when they, they see something um, that they, that they want as opposed to need and they go, well, just put it on your, uh, you know, home goods credit card. And you go, oh, oh okay. <laughs> you know, that there's Cause, interest. Because you can earn points. Yeah, you can earn <laughs> points and, and get more stuff. It, it, it's crazy. And, it's and, crazy. And just to think how much these credit cards are paying for that 30-second spot during the halftime show. They're spending, what I think, uh, during last year's Super Bowl, it was $5 million for a 30-second spot of credit people who have credit cards interest. Yeah. No, and that uh, I just think that goes to show you how incredibly lucrative this business of selling interest or you know generating interest um, truly is. A huge amount of money in terms of advertisements and promotional fees to celebrities, and by the same token, it's a drop in the bucket to get a bigger slice of that four trillion dollars a year that we're all just juicing up on the cards. Really interesting. All right. Well, I think that'll wrap it up for today. Super interesting. Thank you guys for coming in and Thank you, Dave. talking about some of these uh, these ideas. This is David Hagen, and you've been listening to the Financial Wellness Podcast. You've been listening to the Financial Wellness Podcast, Dave's weekly message to keep you on the road to financial success. If you'd like Dave to answer any of your questions, Email them to Dave at DavidRHagan.com. Until next week, this is your announcer, Nick Appel, wishing you every financial success.